Hello YouTube land, my name is Castlecade and today we are going over a tutorial on how to download and install Feed the Beast. I've been getting a few requests in my personal messages and I figured I'd actually personally do this away from my normal schedule just so I can give you guys a bit of a heads up on actually how to do this. If you don't know what it is, Feed the Beast is a custom client slash Minecraft experience slash OMG there's so many mods in here that this will take you like a year to figure out. It's amazing and it's fun. The first thing that you want to do is head over to Google and type in Feed the Beast. Now before I go into the actual download section itself, I'm just going to show you some of the mods that are actually included in this. We have BuildCraft 3, which by itself is amazing and immensely complicated and the amount of things you can do with each and every single one of those is pretty much the same thing. I mean Railcraft, also a big mod. Forestry is a huge mod as well. Same with Red Power. Red Power adds so much redstone type of machinery and so much automation that it's awesome and amazing. I mean, some of the things like Mistcraft, if you've ever liked the Mist series, like the game series, like Riven, Mist, or any of that type of stuff, you'll love this as well. It automatically includes Ray's Minimap. It includes Computercraft, Industrialcraft, and all those other big-ass mods that, you know, have so much to them that this will keep you busy for months without even looking at anything else. And it's amazing. So this is kind of like what Tech it is, but it also has a single player component to it as well. And it is a recent Minecraft client type of thing. So you will be playing on Minecraft 1.4.6 or 1.4.7, etc, etc, or whatever your most recent Minecraft version will be at the time of you viewing this. So to get started, what you want to do is head over to download and download the exe. Mind you, you could do the jar, but I'm just going to show you how to do this for the first time. So download the exe. It'll be called ftb underscore launcher dot exe. It's a very small file, so it won't take you too long to actually grab it. Uh, the next thing that you'll want to open up is just a folder where you want to install the program. I decided to put it in C, like my local disk, and feed the beast. You don't have to worry about going into your user section. You don't have to worry about unchecking, you know, to see if you can actually see the hidden folders for app data or any of that stuff. You can put it directly in C or even put it in your program files. That'll work just as well. I decided, hey, I want to get to this really fast, really quick. I decided I'm going to put it right in C drive. And it's fine. It works. So what you'd want to do then is actually then go to your downloads folder and transfer over the FTP launcher directly to this folder. And as you can see, it's only 525 kilobytes big, so it's not that big, but you'll see once it actually goes through the whole entire process that it's a little bit different. So to get started, you'll have a nice little welcome screen and you're going to be grabbing a whole bunch of stuff. It's going to be adding packs and it's actually finding these mod packs for you, so you don't have to worry about any of that. You can also download the server files from here and you can, you know, these, I believe, are download locations. I'd stick with recommended. Private packs is something new that's going to be coming in the future, but for now, I don't think you can create your own, but that's besides the point. Anyway, so here is all the stuff. I'm just going to quickly go over some of the options. For example, in the news section, you can actually see some of the stuff that they have estimated. In the next two weeks from this video, they should be including private packs. Not to mention the next, again, one to two weeks, they'll also be backdating things. So if you want to download specific maps that they offer, which they do in the map section. Ability for multiple configs, for example, specific mods, etc., etc. And this is actually kind of useful, especially if you download things like Minecraft that have so many different mods in them. And yeah, it just is. Advanced options in Java, etc., etc. Launcher skinning, I will love that once they put that in. I really, really will because I kind of want to package everything up kind of type of thing and actually just launch it and give to people who actually don't aren't very comfortable with modding. Because, I mean, this still requires a little bit of modding for you guys. Here you can actually set the install folder, and this is what I want. I want to keep it at Feed the Beast. So that, again, this is in the option section, and you can actually select how much RAM you want to give it. I have 4 gigs of RAM. At the moment, I'm going to be upgrading to 8, but let's just say I want to you know, slide it up to 2 gigabytes. So this will actually force my Feed the Beast to run a little bit smoother because Java is very memory intensive as well as CPU intensive. So keep that in mind. Some of the other options, it's all in here. If you don't know what you're doing, I'd keep it like this. Just simple. Actually, I also don't like it being auto-maximized because then I have to unmaximize it, then I have to re you know, resize it to actually fit the Let's Play window. But besides the point, 
Okay, again, I'm just going to skip mod packs for now. Uh, these are the different types of maps that you can have, etc., etc., and the texture packs. I love Sortex Fanvert. I'm sorry, but it's perfect for any of the following packs. It's simple, and it's there for you. It's awesome. Anyway, for now, let's just select the Minecraft or Mindcrack pack, which is version 7. It's in 1.4.6, so it's not 1.4.7 compatible yet, but in reality, there isn't much difference between the two. And look at all these mods that are included. Seriously, it's uh, Raise Minimap, Voxel Menu, Petro Generation, uh, Advanced Machines, Buildcraft, which by itself is amazingly complicated, and all this extra stuff that you get automatically just by clicking on Install. Now, if this is your first time actually installing this, what you'll have to do is create a profile. Don't worry, it's all perfectly fine. I'm actually just going to quickly create a profile and then put in your Minecraft password that you use to actually you know, log into Minecraft. So you click on add, it'll automatically do it, and let's launch. As you can see, this is going to be logging in for the first time. It's actually going to be downloading the mod pack itself, which is about 38 megabytes for this one. Minecraft is one of the ones that I personally like. There's also Magic World, which is also pretty good, and Direwolf's pack as well is actually also pretty damn good too. So I mean, look around, see which mods you like. Personally, for me, I'm going to be doing Minecraft for a uh, Let's Play series that I'm going to be doing in that, that I'm going to be doing in the future. So that's all that that's all about. All right, this is actually almost finished up now. So as soon as this loads up, you can actually check out to see what's going on. It's downloading other mod pack files for you, downloading all the jars, etc., etc. It's setting it all up for you. And uh, yeah, this process can take a little bit, but once it's done, you never have to worry about it ever again. It's as simple as that. Once it's downloaded, it'll go in just like a regular Minecraft client. So it's just going to finish downloading the modified Minecraft.jar for you and all the other files as well. Because this will actually create all the files in here that you'd want. So you'd actually have your Minecraft directly built into here, which is nice. Anyways, okay, so it's setting up the environment. So it's setting up Minecraft right now. At this point, you're pretty much done. I mean, it's going through Forge. It's going downloading all the other files as well. It's validating. Everything's done for you. Keep in mind that because this is actually loading for the first time, this will take a while to actually load up. As you can see, this has loaded up now. And as you can see, this is a little different. Yeah. And again, if you look at the Forge mods that are included, there's a whole bunch. Like seriously, there's a, an enormous list. You don't have to activate them all, but I mean, if you want the Minecraft experience that I love and you know always treasure, then yeah. I forgot to actually install some of the uh, texture packs, but that's okay. So we're actually going to be testing this out. We're actually going to be creating a new world. I'm going to allow cheats just so you can kind of see how big the inventory system is. Keep in mind that I have not installed Optifine, so it may be a little laggy. I do apologize. Keep in mind that you can actually install Optifine on Feed the Beast, and that does actually help. There it is. It's going in now. Okay, so we have our new world in the block of text, but that's basically the Greg tech add-on. And that does, in fact, change a lot of recipes, so do you keep that in mind. What the butt is that? Well, this game does add a lot of stuff. And uh, by a lot of stuff, I mean a lot of stuff. Just to show you, you have new inventories. This is your regular creative inventory right here, and then you have other creative inventories. And I mean you have extra biome inventories and a whole bunch of other stuff too, so it's actually really fun. Um, any enabled cheats enabled? Minecraft layout? No. I just kind of want to check to see what's going on with these. Okay. I just kind of want to take a look. Anyway, so these are huge. And this is pretty much how you install and run it. I mean, you have a whole bunch of stuff in here. Mind you, I wouldn't really play around with a lot of this. I'd actually go to the Feed the Beast website and actually check for tutorials on each and every single one of the mods in there. You know, not even tutorials, but mod spotlights. They're like, you know, 10 minutes long or whatever. Just go over the overviews of each one. There's a lot of information everywhere for that. I'm just going to brighten that up and I'm going to turn off view bobbing because that annoys me. 
But uh, yeah, no, everything's in here. And uh, keep in mind, you can play around with a lot of stuff, so do keep that in mind. Actually, I'm going to exit out of this just so I can show you guys some of the other options that you can do. And again, keep in mind that this is Feed the Beast, so it is awesome. It really, really is. Anyways, I'm going to head back to the FTB launcher really quickly. And you don't necessarily have to include the console, so you can actually close that up. However, note that there's an Edit Mod Pack button here. So these are all the enabled mods that you have on this side. You can disable them as you wish, but I usually like to keep them open. I like the idea of having an immense experience that I've never had before. So Not Enough Items is in here as well, and a whole bunch of other stuff is in here. So again, keep that in mind. And if you want to download other mods, I'm actually going to quickly pause the video really quickly. All right, on pause. I actually just downloaded a mod to actually show you guys this. Uh, for example, if the mod is in a jar format, what you'd potentially want to do is actually switch over to this. However, the one that I downloaded is in a zip file. So all you'd really have to do is just add a mod, head over to your place that you actually put it in. I'm actually going to stick it in right here. What's it called? Where is it? Mysticraft is the one that I actually have. So you add that in. And uh, that's about it. What it'll do is it'll add a link to it, and uh, off you go. So now that when I load it up, I'm actually going to quickly show you guys this. As I just changed the mod pack, you'll now get this. So just hit no, and you'll be fine. It's going to quickly load it up. It's loading in the environment, etc., etc. You can disable the check as well, if you wish, but, uh, you know, it's up to you. Yeah. We can actually double check to see what's installed here at the moment. Um, for example, where is that? Actually, I don't think it would necessarily be in this list. I mean, this is a rather large list. I don't know if I want to sit here and look for it. Yeah, no, I don't want to look for it through here. What about light mods? Is it in here? No. Okay, so what you'd want to do is actually head over into the game, and seeing as I know what I actually installed, I'm actually going to see if I can specifically look for a book. A type of book. I might even try creating it. And because I downloaded Mistcraft and installed Mistcraft on Minecraft, which it'll, I think it'll become default next version, but I kind of jumped the gun and I want to kind of include it. So what I'm going to do, oh, actually, they're right here. So descriptive books, linking books, etc., etc. So it's all in here. It's actually right there. So that just basically installed that mod. And I can do the same thing for Optifine and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So why don't we actually quickly explore some of the things that are here? I mean, we have new blocks altogether. That's basalt. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know if I can quickly show you. Oh, right. Okay, so some new resources. So that's Appetite Ore. There is loads. And actually, again, if you go through this whole entire list... Hey, Portal! If you go through this whole entire list, you can see the amount of resources that they include per every single one. And even in Computer Craft, I mean, look at all of those items. You even have floppy disks. You can program your own computers in here. <laughs> But I mean, the amount of stuff that's in here is mind-boggling. And if you ever wanted an immerse Minecraft experience that you've never had before and you'd want to actually follow a Let's Play series, I suggest taking a look at some of this stuff. Amber, for example. A whole bunch of new stuff as well. What's this? Copper. A lot of this stuff is actually you know, included in all the other mods, but the way that they do it, it packages everything all together so you don't have to worry about it. And on world generation, it actually includes everything that you need. So you don't have to worry about anything, you don't have to play with any config files, it's all there for you. Ooh, what's that? Oh right, quartz crystals, so those are also pretty neat too. Anyways guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed. This has been Kestelcade and showing off um, Feed the Beast and how to install the mod. Well, the custom client and a whole bunch of other stuff, too. I hope you guys have enjoyed. This has actually been a actually rather long tutorial, but, I mean, there's a lot of information in here, so I kind of figured I'd actually, you know, try to do a good job on it, I guess. If you have any questions, leave comments down below. All honesty, just leave comments down below. I will reply to every single one of them. What was making that noise? Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyways, again, subscribe, comment, 
like my video. I like it when people like my video. It helps me a lot. And I'm seriously saying that it helps me a lot. So if you guys can, just leave a like on the video, subscribe, etc, etc. And ooh, this is part of the Thumecraft stuff. And that mod itself adds a, a lot of stuff, including a lot of danger and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Anyway, that's enough about this. I'll actually probably try to do this in a spotlight, which will be a lot longer. Or I might actually do a spotlight series on this. I don't know. We'll see. This has been Castle Kate, and I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. Until next time, guys, keep modding.